It's week two of the NFL preseason, where depth charts and playbooks will be put to the test. It's the Nighthawks and the Monarchs on Thursday night. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to one of the great cities of the world, London, England. Coming up, another installment of the NFL International Series, and it should be a great one, as it'll be the Nighthawks of Omaha and the London Monarchs. Brandon Gunn, Charles Davis, happy to be back alongside you. And I'll tell you what, yes, it's just week two of the preseason, but now they've got one game under their belts and a lot of guys trying to prove some stuff down on the field here today. Not only that, these coaches like to win. And I used to think it really didn't matter who won in the preseason. Then I watched some of those shows that the NFL does, and you see the coaches in preseason. the kicker Jake Elliott ready to get this one started and we are underway here in London this taken in at the goal line and he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22 so out comes this offense to take over for the first time leading them out a first round pick in the 2017 NFL draft former Clemson Tiger Deshaun Watson and he makes it so difficult for all defenses because when he's got the ball, it's hard to say when a play is truly over because he can create from any spot on the field and in any situation, even when it appears that he's contained. When he's running your offense, a big play could arrive from any possible spot. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. From the 31, here comes second and a yard. A guy coming off his best season as a pro. Here's Nick Chubb. Seven yards there and a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. On first down, Watson dumps this to his running back, Chubb. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it, and that will bring up second down. the middle it's Chubb and hard running is going to get him over the 40 to the 42 it's a four yard pick up there and it leaves him with third and five they'll need five on this play to move the sticks here's Watson pass taken in by his big tight end and he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield it's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And Deshaun Watson, and when you think about the toughest quarterbacks in the league to game plan against, he's got to be in your top five, does he not? And when you talk about game planning, putting him in the top five, that's an easy call because he can make every throw. That's not an issue at all. He has great touch delivering the football, but that mobility, that added dimension, Oh, when he escapes the pocket and those receivers find their way open, short, medium, and long, he finds the right guy. And last but not least, his toughness. He can stand in the pocket, take a hit, and deliver. Watson's throw complete there to Moore. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Watson. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll bring up second down. To the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. It'll be a pickup of four. Good enough to earn him yet another first down. From the red zone now, Watson. And not able to get it that time. 
He hit on six straight passes. Not there. Second down. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson steps away. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Josh Schwett rushing in and bringing him down to the ground. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going. Under pressure, they got him again. Brandon Graham providing a little deja vu back-to-back -back sacks, and now they're staring at a fourth and long. That sack there, that likely brings out the field goal unit, so they might have to settle for three here on their opening drive. They did some nice things, getting things started there, moving the ball downfield, but taking that sack up third down. That lets the air out of the momentum balloon just a little bit. Hopkins' kick is good, and the opening drive of the game yields three. So they'll likely get a few more drives before we see the second team, but a good start for the first unit with three points. Yeah, good start, and now they want to see them build on it because you're exactly right. They'll get a few more drives at this stage of the preseason. Can they continue to evolve and add to what we just saw in the first drive? So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by someone who has proved doubters wrong his entire career. MVP runner-up a season ago, Jalen Hurts. Tremendous production at college at two different universities, and this is a guy who was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Still much more of a runner than a thrower, but has plenty of arm and is capable of making the big throws downfield. And don't underestimate his ability to think the game. Remember, he's the son of a coach. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Hurts. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. You know, during these preseason games, we're in week two right now. It's always funny looking at our spot charts up here in the booth because with all the guys that might play in this one, it seems to get bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, we pretty much supersize them, don't we? Because, you know, remember, they're carrying 90 now. And with the new rules, they'll carry 90 all the way through the preseason before they make the final cut. Oh, yeah, a lot of guys to learn for these games. On fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. Back deep, Jakeem Grant. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Ball on the 30 now. Here's a second and eight. Here's Watson. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Under pressure now, Watson, and down he goes. Give the sack to Fletcher Cox. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Man, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game, I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what, when he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. 49-yard punt, five on the return. And they will take over first and 10. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. 
They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Throwing his hurts. This short throw caught by Goddard. So nothing doing there. And it'll be fourth down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. On is the punter man as he boots this one away. Returnable for Grant. And a seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. And here's the Omaha offense getting set to go now. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Here's third and six. Back to throw, Watson. Quick throw on the slant, but that's behind his man and incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. It's taken to the 26. It's a 45-yard punt, six yards on the return. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ball game as they come up first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Hurts. That is incomplete. So now here in the second week of the preseason, you'd expect the starters play a little bit more than they did in week one, but not a whole lot. So if you're an offensive coordinator, what are you looking for? What you're looking for is things getting cleaned up as you go along because most of your playbook's probably installed. How well are they handling it? Easy in and out of the huddle, no mental mistakes, or it's starting to look like a good offensive football team. A gain there of 21 yards. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first and 10, it's Swift. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now, and it's London with the football. From the 41, here's second and five. As they've got it as we resume action. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. He's going to get that to Swift underneath. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 13 yards, and it keeps the drive moving. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. On first and ten, it's Hurts. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward. And how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. They go play action with Hertz. Caught by Jones. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards.
They run out of the gun with Swift. A good display of power, but it will only get him just inside the five to the four. And that's a gain of six on the first down run. Here now, second and four. Once again, it's Swift. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. Well, now hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. Well, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. And we'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. It'll be Hurts on the option. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Jalen Hurts keeping it himself from a yard out. And his guys have taken the lead. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as Grant opts not to return it. Now here's the Omaha offense getting set to go now. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three-point CD. Yeah, if you're into the points-per-drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. And still fighting. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. Second down and six now. Now it's Watson. The ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. As we thought they might do here in week two of the preseason, they've left their starting quarterback out there for this second quarter. But I would imagine we will not see him after halftime. Yeah, this is the time of year you've got to get your backup some reps and make sure you protect your starting quarterback. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. London about set to take over on offense. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out, looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Second down, here's Hurts. This short throw caught by Goddard. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. A gain of 13, it's a first down. That one caught out wide by Julio. Solid move, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. And now it looks like we're going to get a timeout here. We've got a man shaking up. Well, injury's never good, especially here in the preseason. Hopefully nothing serious. They'll take a look at him, and we'll step aside for a moment. Second down at six now from the 42. Play action. Here's Hurts. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Here's Hurts to throw. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. So many times in my career.
career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. As long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. But first down, Hurts will try and set up the screen to Swift. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. From the 29, here's second in the yard. Hurt sets up to throw it. Under pressure, and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Dalvin Tomlinson breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. He's got his target. That's complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who moves to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Swift going to try up the middle. And he'll take this one down near the 15. And give the tackle to Anthony Walker. They work now on second and nine. They're going to look to throw. Hurts oh, fumbles it. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Hey, we can push ball security all we want here, but how about that effort on defense? Excellent job inside the red zone. Just took away at least three points by forcing that fumble. And here's the Omaha offense getting set to go now. And they take over in a precarious spot here, albeit after forcing the fumble at the goal line. This is safety territory as they start from their own one. They begin this drive with Chubb, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. They were just trying to get their offense a little more room down near their own goal line, but this is just going to make things worse. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. And again, it's Chubb. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and 10. They go up the middle with Chubb. And they're able to corral him right around the eight, and that's short of the first down. It'll be a gain of seven, but I'd imagine we'll see the punt team here on fourth down. So they bring out their punter. He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And a fair catch is taken here a step or two inside the 45-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. Well, let's shine the spotlight on the former Georgia Bulldog, DeAndre Swift, who's set to begin this next drive. He's been effective so far over the 40-yard mark here in the second quarter. Don't forget about those guys up front, though. They've been effective, too. The leverage game has been in their favor. They've been the one. And now off to the races down the right side. Touchdown. Albert Okuegunov. And the Monarchs are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call. But he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. Elliott Good with a PAT, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This is Jakeem Grant. And able to get this out to the 25. Omaha's offense back out for another series. They trail now 14-3, an 11-point deficit as they start things out with a first and 10.
They'll start this drive out on the ground. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Watson now to throw. He's got the connection to Moore. And they're able to get this one across the 35. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. This is Hunt on the draw play. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Watson trying to get his guys moving. To throw on second is Watson. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Fair to say it hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Now a first down throw, Watson. Able to find a lot of empty space there, picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. They asked him to take charge and get them to a spot where they could at least attempt to kick before the half, and he does just that. Didn't trust what he saw downfield, so he took it upon himself to get them into field goal range using his legs. That's coming through with a play they needed in a big spot. A first and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. It sort of looks like they stopped some fighting them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown! Amari Cooper from 21 yards away. And the Nighthawks get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Extra point good by Hopkins, and that makes it a 14-10 ball game. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. This offense back to work now late in this first half. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I said, go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And it's complete right back in the hands of Smith. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get it right at the 30-second mark of this first half. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. Smith catches left side. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Throwing his hurts. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida, and check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in just a minute. Week two of the preseason is upon us. 
each team now with just one more game after this one. And then we will get it all started as we normally do on the first Thursday after Labor Day. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. And this offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep the tight end in a few more times and maybe add running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And they'll stay on the ground with Gainwell again. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. And the linebacker, Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa, on the tackle. On second down, Gamewell looking for space. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Mariota thrown across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jeremiah owusu -Kormola. And to the 43, so down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. That is a tough way to start the third quarter. You get the football open to drive it down, put it in the end zone, and take the lead. Instead, they give them the football. And I think the key here is for them to not get discouraged. That is not how they drew it up, not how they saw it in their minds. But there's a long way to go in this game. You know, they've just got to find a way to come back one play at a time. Yes, it's a cliche, but they can get it done. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Flacco looking for his first toss. Throw right side into the hands of Akins. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. This is Akins hauling in the short pass. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. On the ground, it's four. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. And we'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. Now Flacco. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. You get the sense that they're saying we're not playing up to what we're capable of and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. Well, whatever was said in the locker room during the break must have worked. They forced the turnover. They didn't get the touchdown, Charles, but it does translate into three points to begin this second half. Exactly as they discussed in the locker room at halftime, Get some points to get things kick-started. Now start your half off with some momentum. Gives you something to build on for your next possession. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So... Frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. 
And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Now again, a run with Gainwell. Taken down at the 42. I feel like I can see what he was thinking on that carry. He found that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Option handoff for Gainwell. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. And they'll try and run for it with Gainwell. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. They bring their punter out there now as he's on to kick it away. They'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Now here's the Omaha offense getting set to go now. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I like the way you can describe it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. First and ten, and Flacco looking to throw. Working the middle, and he's got it complete to Aikens, the tight end. That one a 14-yard play, and it keeps this drive moving couple of first downs right in succession and this is an offense that can really use a good drive and they're off to a fast start here they run with four on a nice burst there as he'll take this inside the 30 to the 28 yard line another nice gain 13 yards that time and another first down Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. And all the way down inside the five to the four. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, injury's never good, especially here in the preseason. Hopefully nothing serious. They'll take a look at him, and we'll step aside for a moment. Here's Flacco. And it's caught. Touchdown. Jordan Akins from four yards out. And the Nighthawks have taken the lead here in this third quarter. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Kevin Stefanski going to leave the offense out to go for two. They're going to try and run. And he is not going to make it to the goal line. So the defense holds. And this remains a five-point game. You know, sometimes the guy on the defensive side of the ball, he just has a good feeling or a good read. And he unleashed his defense on that one. Boy, they stopped him in a big way. Yeah, I hate to be cliche, but sometimes we overanalyze. They just have more want. Looked like they had more want right there. More want and more people to the ball. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. London about set to take over on offense. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, 
They had to punt it away, this time hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. From the 22, here's second and eight. Takes this to the 27, give him four yards. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. Off the play fake, Mariota. No bottle, the fumble. It's out, it's loose. Well, offensively lucky they're able to keep the football, but now fourth down, so they'll have to boot it away. I do think, though, they're going to look at this as a positive. One, they recovered the fumble, so they retained possession. But two, being able to punt it, changes field position for them. Imagine if that turnover takes place there. Now your defense has to go onto the field and try and hold. Instead, they get a little breathing room. It'll be a 41-yard punt. Give them five on the return. Now here's the Omaha offense getting set to go now. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead. Thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. On second down, Flacco to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Grant. It'll go down as a gain of six, and they'll be facing a third and 12. Let's see what they have drawn up here, a little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Now it's Flacco. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Ford, and he can only get this to the 42-yard line, and that is not near enough. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. You're watching preseason football on EA Sports. Welcome back now here in London. As we've got the final quarter upon us, we get ready to start the fourth. And Bojorquez on to punt as he gets it away. London about set to take over on offense. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. And they'll begin on the ground with game one. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. The stop for no gain brings up second and ten from the 20. From the gun, here's a run by Gainwell. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Mariota had an 87-yard run as a rookie. This one a bit less, but it is a first down. Well, straight ahead, it's game well. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Mariota's throw taken in by Watkins here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. They run behind center with Gainwell. They're able to break through that initial contact and winds up getting about three there. It's second down. From the 47 now, they work with a second and seven. 
A give running right is Gamewell. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Boy, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. And we'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. Mariota now from the 50. Looking for Watkins, and it's intercepted. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. So the completion gets him just a yard, and it'll be second down. Passing play, Flacco. Throw left side, complete. That's four. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And he's going to bring the fumble back for a touchdown. And a big turning point here in the second half, Charles, after that play. All you're trying to do is change momentum, flip things around for your team. You're just trying to take the ball away. How about when you take it away and score? That really changes things. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. Mariota now after the fumble recovery. And he's going to go down. Can't get rid of it. So a sack on the two-point try. Well, that decision to me was all about pulling up the chart. You know, that, that beautiful chart that tells you when to go for two, when you go that for chart. one. I do love it. It helps you with your decision-making during heated times. And just look at it right here in this part, point of the game. Go for two. Try and make it a field goal difference. But now just up one makes the rest of this fourth quarter a little more interesting. Yeah, they followed the chart. They just didn't get the two points on the board, did they? Nope. Flacco fakes the give, sets to throw. He finds his man complete. It's fourth. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Here's a second and two now from the 33. And looked like some movement there. Let's get the call. Ball start, offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Flacco here on second down. His throw incomplete. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's not locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, but a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. And they'll send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. Great coverage there holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt. London about set to take over on offense. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. They'll start out here with the option left. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. Ronnie Hickman burying him short of the sticks for a loss there. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. The offense on third down tonight, they're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is going to be third and 13. And they get 
to Mariota here as he's dropped on the sack. Taken down for the fifth time this game. Multiple defenders there to get him. And on now is the punter. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 42. To pass, Flacco. He's got Akins, the tight end. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A big pickup of 38. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection... That's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. From the gun, Flacco. That would complete to Prochet. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Now second and five. Here's Flacco, looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Ford. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. And the question now, how do they want to work the clock here on first and goal? A field goal would give them the late lead. Bootleg, Flacco. That is caught at the 7-yard line. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Ford. Touchdown. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic, and it sounds almost trite. But the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. A toss running left, four, and he is not going to make it. So they won't be able to move this lead up to a touchdown as it'll remain a five-point ball game. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25. London about set to take over on offense. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. First down, Mariota. Blitz coming and down he goes. Jordan Elliott able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. On play action, Mariota. And that'll be dumped off to Gamewell. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. Going to need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. On is the punter man as he boots this one away. Now fair catch is called for and taken at the, we'll call it the 37-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return, and that will come the offense as they take over.
They look to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up second down. Right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's our visitors with the football as we get you reset. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. This one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. Mariota sets to lead this offense. Down by five. A minute 52 to play. You can't say the preseason isn't interesting. This has been great as they come up first and ten. They'll wind up losing three there on the sack. Good pressure, and it's second down. Remember now, no overtime in the preseason, but where the score is at now, overtime would be unlikely. If these guys can put it in the end zone here, they'd be looking pretty good. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play, but sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. Now the throw on third down. Knocked away and incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. Here we go. This is fourth down. To throw Mariota. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Picked off by Martin Emerson. Well, you knew you had to take some chances here with the clock winding down, needing a touchdown to win it, and that one might have just sealed their fate. Yeah, and that's the nature of the two-minute drill. The offense trying to go downfield and make their plays, but defenses, they're sitting back watching everything that they do, but not too far back. They want to be in position to make a play on the ball, and that they did. They've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Now a timeout called for by the defense. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And he will take this one in for a touchdown. Jerome Ford ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And the Nighthawks will add to their fourth quarter lead. What a huge touchdown that was, obviously, here in the late stages of the fourth quarter as they try to put this one away. And, Brandon, when they watch the film after this week, they'll be very proud of every rep if they close this game out. Just a few snaps remaining. They can't relax just yet. Hopkins with the extra point, and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Marcus Mariota getting ready to go again here on offense. So far, this has to feel like a horrible dream for him. He's thrown more completions to the other team than he has to his three interceptions. Now, this will test him mentally. And this is going to test his mettle and test his fortitude because once you've thrown those three, you start to feel sorry for yourself. But you can't do that. There's more football to be played. I was talking with Jason Garrett, the coach of the Cowboys, and he mentioned at one point Tony Romo threw five interceptions in a game, but turned out to be one of the better games he played because he rallied down the stretch and took them to victory. A lot on the line here, even for just a preseason game. Jobs to be won and lost. It's third down. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. And this is four down territory here. They know down two scores at this late stage, 10-yard passes aren't going to do it. So they took the shot there, but it winds up incomplete. Desperation time. Mariota on fourth down. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with the football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. 
They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And boy, possession here turns over with the football already being in the red zone. Now here's the Omaha offense getting set to go now. And checking the timeouts. They do have two defensively, but no real need to use them as they're not going to be able to stop the clock after that. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 45 seconds left to go in the game. Here's Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. This will be a 37-yard attempt. And the 10-year bet knocks it through the goalpost. So the starting field position was terrific following the surprising turnover on downs, but the end result, only three points. Simply stated, I think you have to look at that as a missed opportunity. And that final kickoff concludes the ball game, partner, and one side a really nice win in this one. They were good on offense and on defense. And I'm guessing in the other locker room, partner, the head coach is just telling his team, hey, we didn't play well enough to keep it close enough where that one possession down the stretch might have given us an opportunity to win the game. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. So long, everybody.